Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio, man. We back. Verbal cardio is back. You know what it is. You know what I'm saying? We do this weekly. It might be a little hiatus for the holidays, but we do this weekly. You know what I'm saying? Got my co-host in the building, Water. Epic co-host. Tanned it down. Look at this, man. Look at the, look at the work I put in on this gallon today. I just I just cracked this mug open at 955. Actually, actually, it's like 10 o'clock. Look at the damage done. I do my quickest gallon drink on podcast days. I don't know what it is since I'm trapped somewhere. I can I can I can do the full gallons quick on my podcast days because I got daddy issues. I got verbal cardio. Now the movie reviews are back. So I gotta I gotta keep the vocals hydrated. You know what I'm saying? Keep keep the vocals lubricated, if you will. Pause. So shout out to the co-host, man. Make sure y'all drinking y'all water, man. Make sure you're drinking water. No excuses. I don't want to hear no horse shit excuses on why you're not drinking enough water, man. It's all horse shit. Whatever excuse you got for not drinking enough water is horse shit. It's, it's absolute 100% horse shit. Guaranteed. I stand on it. I stand on business. I stand on business when it comes to water, man. Drink more of it. I don't want to hear no, I don't want to hear a damn thing on why you can't drink enough water. I forgot. I be working hard. I just ain't there. I don't like it. I don't like it when it's room tip. I don't know. It ain't got no taste, man. Shut up. Sick of y'all, man. Drink that H2O. It's vital for your survival. It's vital for your organs. It's vital for your skin, man. All of it. It's all good things. You can't lose. You can't lose when you're drinking water, man. You can't lose. Remember that. While you're out here addicted to Starbucks and hot beverages, Pouring a little hot liquid in those plastic cups. You're drinking the plastic and the coffee. Having the time of your life. Addicted. I see people addicted. Airport after airport. Line be long at Starbucks. Dunkin' Donuts. Y'all be getting that coffee, man. We strung out. We out here. I need the coffee. I can't, I can't get my day started until I get the coffee. Addiction. Addiction, y'all. But you should get addicted to this water. You should be looking at water like I can't get my day started until I give me a swig of that H2O. That's the, the those are the addictions I want to see. Mm. Ooh. And water ain't gonna give you no headaches. You know when you're addicted to coffee and you don't have coffee, you be getting headaches, you be having withdrawal symptoms. Ain't no symptoms with this. Symptom-free living. Just when you're drinking water, it's beneficial to your body and everything you hold dear. No symptoms. No withdrawals. Come on, man. Get on it, man. Shout out to my patron saints in here, man. G-Man, Tony Ann, Sharon McD, King Panda, Zakia, Nana P, DJ, Chris M, 2 Jesse, uh, Master CEO, J. Edwards, Mark G, uh, Dawn Foster, Gladys Diaz, Styler, Miss Josie, Cousin Bob, Tony Ant, Mrs. Incredible, Cutie B, Alice Marie, Chris Russell, Zay Nova, Mr. Enigma, Le French Guy, Carla Renee, Zakia Tillman, Jay Finesse. I appreciate y'all, man. Coco Puff, Chris M., David Finch, Miss Re Renee, Heavy B, man. Randomly CJ, Plump Pisces, man. DLB Ninja, man. Don Foster. Kedra Mincy. Let's go, man. Parties by CC. Camila Williams. Ashley J87. DT Hutt. Eric Payne. Ash to marry you, man. Terrence C. You see in the IG Live, you see all these shout outs? See all the shout outs I'm giving? Y'all ain't going to get no shout outs like that in the IG Live. You just. It's risky, man. But you get the shout outs and you a patron saint, man. Join my Patreon, man. Join it. Get in on it. Embrace it. Hold it. Caress it. Join up, man. 
Mm-hmm. Stop being scared. Stop being scary, man. Join the Patreon, man. Get in on this. Get in on this. Um, so apparently, I haven't seen the argument with T.I. and his son and, and the, the parents and King. You know, I haven't seen the, the video. I haven't really tapped in, but I heard he was just, you know, he feels like, you know, if y'all want to be doing interviews with me, man, I, I need that 10K. I need that bread. I stand on business. I know he said I stand on business. No matter who you are, you got to pay me for this. He's like, yo, it's family. Like, nah, man, I'm standing on business. I mean, I don't know what's going on, so I can't really speak on it. I don't know the full details. Plus, I know tip, so I don't want to be, you know, saying too much. But I don't know what's going on. I got nothing because because my my uh, my patron saints wanted me to touch on it, but I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't. I, don't, I didn't really. Ta- I didn't really uh, pull up in the videos to see what was really going on. See what was really going on. But Donut Lord asks, falling in love. What's the fastest y'all have ever fallen in love? Or so what you thought was love? What's the fastest for you? What's what's your personal record where he's just like, yo, where you said to somebody in a romantic sense, I, lo- I love you. What's your record? What's your quickest where you was just like, I still love you. I would like to know. One Zakia said one week, but it was a damn child. Oh, you was a damn child. So I was a damn child. A month, probably. One year. Five weeks. Five months. About a month. And then I got scared thinking I was moving too fast. One month. Now I have a nine-year-old. A few months. A month. It takes me months. Like four months. Two months. Know her for two months. But the second day in person, I knew I loved her. Maybe around a month. Six months. Uh, I said it over the weekend. Did it take you that weekend or you just said it over this particular weekend? No comment. I'm late. What are we talking about? Passionate for God. I was asking the peeps. Falling in love. What's the fastest you've ever said? I love you in a romantic sense. About a year, two months, and then we broke up in month three, two weeks. Now we married. One year, three months, but I knew her for a year. Never. I don't throw that word around. Okay. Three weeks. Okay, what's the record for you, Amir? Well, you was like, I love you. Not not that high pitch, but <laughs> uh like uh I mean, it's pretty I I I do it pretty quick. I be feeling it, but like, you know what? I think that's what it is for we in there. Yeah, you just say it. Yeah. You like, say it first usually. I don't know how many times you've been in love, but like, you know, are you usually the initiator of the love reveal? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'll say like a month. A month? Maybe. Okay. That's probably the record. But it's like, are we going off like when you say it or when you feel it? Because that's when, different. Okay, we'll we'll do both. When you feel it, what's when the I record? When I feel it. Now how do you know man, if it's love? It's like that's, when, a, that's a tough one. When you feel it. When I feel it, it's like it it's beyond the the thing of like um I find you attractive or anything like that. Right. It's like uh, another level of like care or intimacy mm-hmm. that you're kind of like looking for in a or a person or you kind of experience. Right. In my opinion, that's how it is. And then uh, also uh, might be, um, what's the word? Either way, I feel like love is a choice, right? Like you can okay. fall into it and then after that you stick with it and that's the choice that you're making mm, that's the choice yeah you, you you gotta keep it going yeah. you know what i'm saying it's not just gonna keep standing there because that's what people talk about the cupcake phase is so great and then you right. fall out you stop trying to love so mm-hmm. i i would say like it's been i would say like a week or two like my my current girlfriend it was like when we uh we were talking or whatever i was like okay i like her and then yeah. i met her and i was like uh the feelings are strong very strong okay for this girl and i was like i'm gonna just keep it down because we're not together yet and all this other stuff and then we got together it was like a month afterwards okay like right around valentine's day our stuff lined up right around that time and then it was like we said it to each other without directly saying it uh-huh. and then the first time we said it it was like oh okay we're on the same page got you 
But you 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 said the initial. I think she did. Oh, okay. And you backed it up. You were like, yeah. I, I was like, I'm right the there with way. you. I yeah. thought it was just. I me. was I was going to say, it, but I didn't want it to be like too headstrong. I hate to come in too yeah. headstrong, but I also don't deny my feelings. So I just worded it in a way where it was like, oh, he said I love you, but he ain't say it. Yeah. But then it was came out and it was like you know almost like questioning like yeah and i was like no that's that yeah exactly i'm i'm with you i'm with you so okay yeah it's always good when it's reciprocal where it's just like y'all on the same page uh you've never said it first D- danger knows has never said it first um i love to love you tony <laughs> <laughs> um for me for me personally like um I'm very transparent and I'm very expressive on, you know, what I'm feeling, whether it be, I know y'all be like, man, don't even be fussing on the, on the other side of that. I'm also very buttery when I'm in, when I'm in that zone of really feeling somebody. So, you know, um, when I feel it, I'll be like, yo, man, it feel like, it feel like love. And, you know, I'm going to say it, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying it to get a reaction back. I mean, it would be cool. That would be ideal to be like, I love you. And then she says it back. But I'm not saying it. Ex- I would hope for the because I feel like I feel like we got something here. But when I say it, I'm saying it because that's how I feel about you. Now, if you're on a different wavelength at that time, which is fair, you might not be there yet, but I'm here. And I'm going to say how I feel. And so um, I like I like to just express how I feel, like in the moment. So um, That scares people off. It does. It's risky. It's risky if you say it. If you say it and that other person is not there, they can run for the hills. Yeah. Or, you know, some people do. They be like, I was going to tell you that, but I didn't want you to think, you know, too, I was crazy. Fast, yeah. yeah so they like so they withhold it. And but they be feeling it, but they they hold it in. So but I try to be like, if I'm feeling it, I'll be like, well, if you if you feeling it and holding it in, well, I'ma just tell you where I'm at. And then and then they be like, I I didn't want to say nothing. Well, I said it. I put my I put my ball sack out there, man. Put my booty cheeks on the line. So yeah. Man, you know, love is love. So, and everybody, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Sometimes, sometimes people don't be throwing that word around. Sometimes people be really analyzing like, yo, I think I like you. I like you a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, still analyzing. You still going through the motions and that's fair. If you take your sweet time, if you don't say it right away and don't let people force you into saying it. If you don't feel that way, don't feel obligated to say it back. Yeah. Cause then that's you know. the thing. You're going to end up in something that you ain't want to be in. Exactly. You know, you do not have to say it back if you don't really feel it. So keep that in mind. Because, you know, if I don't feel it, I'm not going to say it. That's just how I roll, you know what I mean? There's so many layers to the the love. Like, have love for someone, be in love with someone. Right. And then, like, love someone. I'm sure there's more. There's more. There's so many. There's, there's so, so many, many tears. Of, yeah. Of, there's so many tears of, of and love. types. It's like you know. Like I got love for people. I got love for this. I yeah. got love for that. Yeah. Like, like I'm in love with my girlfriend. You right. Know? I love making music. I love you know those yeah. kind of things. Like it's just. And then the love for your significant other is going to change. It's going to go through changes. It's going to be like I'm in love with her, but then you you might grow into a phase where I love I love her. Beyond. The in love, where you just love your mate as, as a, a person. person. Yes. And so once you reach that, and, and to me, that's the ideal, where you love them as a human being. Because, you know, that, that romantic love is always going to ebb and flow. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. But when, when you love them as a person, that's, that's the ultimate right there, where it's just like, I love you, man. So... I don't know why I always do the high pitch, but it's just funny. <laughs> it's from that uh it's from that, that video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still love you. They're like, <laughs> I can never not hear that. Shout out to my new uh Patreon members, D and Alicia Adams. Just joined the Patreon, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all some real ones for this. 
just joined. Welcome. Welcome to the fold. Um, but yeah, y'all. We got to welcome the new saints. The saints go marching in. All right, I'm going to do one more topic before I cut off the IG live. Y'all getting cut off. Actually, no. I'm going to do my ad, and then I'm going to cut y'all off, man, because y'all y'all on the fence. Y'all not pulling the trig. Um, so here we are. Um, Got to pay the bills around here. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me. So let me find the ad. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So sports is in full swing. You know what I'm saying? Sports is out here. Basketball's in full swing. The NFL is going. Baseball just kind of ended right now. But, you know, sports is in full swing, man. My bookie. NFL week number eight, man. If you found a $100 bill on the ground, you wouldn't walk past it. So why are you passing up on cashing winners every weekend? My bookie has the biggest online selection of odds and contests to fill all your sport betting needs anytime, anywhere, so you can turn that sports knowledge into cash in your wallet. Bet on the NFL, the major league playoffs, or play for a share of big cash prizes in the weekly blackjack tournaments. If you've been waiting for the right time to get in on the action, that time is now. Make your winning move today. You can sign up at my bookie, use the promo code VERBAL, and claim your deposit match redeemable up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code VERBAL to claim your bonus. Experience the thrill of sports betting right from the comfort of your own home. You can bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Man, get in on it, man. If you got all this sports knowledge, why not use that for financial gain? Why not? Why not, man? Go to my bookie, man. Use that promo code verbal, man. Get in on this. You might as well. It might change your life. Using that sports knowledge, man, it might change your life, shorty. You done won big. You be like, man, you got some pep in your step. That's because I won over the weekend. Won a little, won a little thousand dollars real quick. You know what I'm saying? A little something to add on. You know, bills is coming in. So I use my sports knowledge to come up in the game. Why not, man? Get in on that my bookie, y'all. Feel every piece of it. All right, now I'm cutting the I'm cutting the live off. If y'all want to see the rest of this episode live. Join my Patreon. If you don't want to join the Patreon, the new episode drops to model on all podcast platforms, and you can see it on my YouTube page. So do that there. And if you're not a member of the Patreon, I'm sorry, but I'm cutting it off, man. Shutting down the studio. Boom, pow. Done. Um, Thanksgiving. We just had it. We just did it. We did it. We were there. We came. We saw. We conquered. We ate. We built it with family. How was y'all's Thanksgiving, man? What I did for Thanksgiving, I went to Kevin Melissa's house for Thanksgiving. Had a great time. They made sure I was taken care of on the vegan tip. They ordered me some food. Um, and I'll tell you exactly what I ate. And I appreciated them for that, man. They looked out for your boy. They didn't have me sitting on the side drinking smoothies and just eating this, the regular veggies. I had air fried lion's mane. Uh, that's mushroom if you're wondering what lion's mane is. I had jerk cauliflower steaks. Okay. I had re, uh, root vegetable ratatouille. That's sweet potato, mashed potatoes, and parsnip. And I had smothered stuffed tofu. All of it was good. Especially that that smothered stuffed tofu, fire! I roll. I loved it. That's what I ate on Thanksgiving. I did taste Melissa's mac and cheese, and I did taste Melissa's yams, and I did uh, taste Danny's pineapple pound cake, and I did taste Danny's. She did a mixture of sweet potato and pumpkin pie. She put it in one. Everything was fire. Shout out to Melissa. Shout out to Danny. They threw down. Food was great. Food was fantastic, man. I had a good time. I ate. I had the options. Sincere was with me the whole day. So I had my son with me. We had a good time. Good company. Kev was there. Melissa was there. Zay was there. Joe was there. Greg was there. Mel was there. The babies were there. 
You know what I'm saying? It was a great time. It was a great time. We played a card game that I never played before. I forget what the name of it was, but it was a good time. So we played a card game. We was gambling with chips. So, you know, once we do the games, I'm all in. I'm all in. So I had a great time, man. Football was on. Rebecca was there. It was a good, it was a good time. Danny was there. Her kid, man. Good times was had. Money was there. And Monty, when I go to Kev's house now, Monty don't be trying to sexually assault me no more, which I appreciate. I appreciate that because Monty used to be, every time I went over to Kev's house, he was on my leg, humping my leg, looking me in the eyes. I didn't like that, man. I didn't like that. It was too personal, man. He was making the eye contact. I wasn't comfortable. And then when he got when he got fixed, he's changed. He don't be on me like that no more. I was like, man. I'm sorry you had to go through the little procedure, but listen, if that if that keeps you off me, so be it, man. Here we are. So I went there. Me, me and uh, Sincere were there, and then we went over. We shot over to Cherie and Tony's house um, to kick it with them for a little bit and on the evening tip. It was just them there, so we just kicked it with them, talked to them, watched some more football. And Cherie is my ex-wife, and Tony is her uh, husband. So we were there, and we just kicked it, built it. You know what I'm saying? I had, I tasted Sincere's cornbread. Sincere made cornbread. So I tasted that, and I had a molasses cookie. And that was it. That was my Thanksgiving. We was over there. I took a nap on the couch before we had to drive back to my place. It was a good-ass day, man. Thanksgiving was right this year. Low-key, I didn't cook anything at all. Um, normally I make dressing on Thanksgiving, uh, but I, I didn't, uh, I didn't make anything. I was just, I was just along for the ride this year and I appreciate it all. I felt the love. It was, I felt social. I felt rejuvenated. Anytime I hang out with my children, I feel rejuvenated. I'm energized. It was a good time. It was a good time. Had leftovers the next day, finished them off. And then I only had one day of leftovers and that's it. That sums up my Thanksgiving. Um, I'd be dead ass serious about this shopping cart shit, yo. Like, if you leave your shopping cart in the parking lot, I can't get with it. I can't get with it, man. I can't get behind it. I can't support it. I can't. I can't. I can't. You just leaving the shopping cart wherever you feel like it. I can't do it, y'all. I can't do it. When I be pulling up in the parking lots and I turn into a spot and there's a shopping cart in the way, shopping carts rolling through the sh- uh, through the parking lot because of heavy winds and it's just going to hit somebody's car. This is your doing. I can't get with it, man. I cannot. And one of my homegirls, she, she's a proud leave the shopping cart wherever. She's proud of this. And I know her personally. I'm just like, I was appalled at what she wrote in my comment section. I was like, I do it and I ain't got no shame. I'll park it right up under the, uh, the, the street light or whatever, the, the lamppost. No shame in her game. And I was like, once I saw there was no shame, I look, I look at her differently now. I look at her differently now. It's just like, this This is who you are as a person? And I know, I'd be like, man, Tony, who are you to judge? Some people should be judged. Some people should be judged. I know people be like, don't judge, but some people should be. When you're a serial killer, you should be judged. When you're a pedophile, you should be judged. When you're a thief, you should be judged. When you leave shopping carts in the parking lot, you should be judged. Everybody wants to lean on, don't judge me, you're horrible. And then somebody in the conversation was like, yo, I think old girl likes you, man. Y'all should go out on a date. No, we, we could never now. We could never now. We could never. We could never date now. 
Once I know that you're proud of yourself, I can't. I I could never. I could never. Once I see this side of it, it's just we we don't have nothing in common at this point. There's nothing now. It could never be. It could never be. And I know y'all going to be like, how are you equating the shopping cart lead to serial killers and pedophiles? There's no difference for me. There's no difference. Because if you can leave the shopping cart in the parking lot, you're capable of anything. In my eyes, you're capable of anything. You just... You just left the shopping cart right there. You ain't even remotely put it in the rack. Oh, you, you out here killing people. As far as I, as far as I know, I don't, I don't even know you right now. I don't know what you're capable of. You embezzled millions of dollars from struggling families at, at, at that point. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know what you're capable of at this point. You just be leaving the shopping carts. Who who are you? Who are you, man? That's how real it is, man. I've been in a creative fog lately, and... There's a number of re- there's a number of reasons why I'm probably in the creative fog. There's the there's the the trauma that I, the emotional trauma of losing the son, of course. There's me feeling overworked, overexposed, feeling like I have to just keep going and going and going and going and going. Even within the breaks that I take, I'm still not truly taking breaks. I haven't been doing much outside. I'll just be in the house. I go on tour. I go in the house. Uh, A friend of mine was like, you need to take more risks and not, not career risks, just like, you know, risk in your, in your real life. I was like, Hmm. Okay. So it's a number of things, but what I discovered last night when I did Tony Baker and friends is that I got rejuvenated. So being in being in an environment where I am being creative and in my space and in my zone, I was like, yeah, I felt like I felt like I got the juices flowing again. But I also know that I need that time to r- truly rest, live life, take the risks, stop overthinking things, take trips, do stuff. I know I need to do all this. And I feel like the creative, the creative juices really get flowing when I'm just living life, when I'm just out here experiencing things. And so I'm taking all that in. So I'm looking forward to 2024. I feel like it's really gonna crack open crack open my creative juices and my, you know, my flows and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to 2024. Cause I'm gonna be like, all right, let me just let me just live life. Let me experience new things. Let me dabble in meditation now. Let me uh, let me just explore the avenues. No drug, no heavy drugs, no no cocaine, no heroin, no meth. But you know, just open open my world up a little bit more. Um, so I'm looking forward to that coming up and all that good stuff. But within this, within this, I have been eating well. I've been exercising regularly. I've been walking five miles a day. I get on the elliptical. I get on the Peloton. I've been mindful of the foods that I've been, you know, eating on. I've been intermittent fasting. So for more clarity in my brain, uh, my energy is right. I wake up in a good space um, in terms of energy. I, I intermittent fast for 13 hours a day. That's the minimum. So usually I go over that. I never eat past 10 p.m. So my body has time to just break everything down. So I'm no longer midnight snacking. I'm no longer gorging on stuff, excuse me, in the midnight hour. So with that, I've been slimming down. I've been slimming down, man. I've been losing weight, slimming down, looking different in that mirror. You know what I'm saying? 
So even within the creative fog, from a health and nutrition standpoint, I've been on the game. I've been on the game ball. And so my body goals are my body goals. So I know people be like, Tony, you don't need to lose no more weight. You don't need to lose weight. You don't need to do this. I want to. I have a certain goal that I want to attain for my own body that's for me more so than you. So, you know, that's that's what I want to shoot for. And I appreciate everybody saying you look great and all that, but but it's all about the the individuals, you know, what they want for themselves. And in my case, I want I want different for the for myself. So, let me let me have that. You know, I want to I want to get to a certain level. That's my goal. And it's fair. Like, I'm not out here starving myself. I'm not on no crash diets. I ain't doing nothing crazy. So let, let me just achieve what I want to achieve with my body. You know what I'm saying? It's like when people be like, when they see my old my old teeth, you know, the, the gap. They be like, man, your gap was dope. That gap wasn't dope. That gap was no good. It was no good, man. And I appreciate I appreciate that that y'all was like, man, I ain't see nothing wrong with the with the gap. I did. My teeth was all over the place, man. It was Kevin Spacey. Teeth was all over the place, man. So when <laughs> so when, you know, when y'all be like, man, we missed the old teeth. I'm like, you missed the old teeth? You disrespecting my teeth right now. You disrespect the current teeth when you be like, man, I like the old teeth. You disrespecting my current teeth. And for me, I love my current teeth. I think they better. Me personally, man, I think they better, man. It's just more, it's just more organized in here now. So when you sit there and be like, man, we missed the old teeth. You're disrespecting my new teeth. And when I say new teeth, I don't mean I got you know, veneers, these are my actual organic teeth. They just, they just got moved together. They coming together at the table of brotherhood a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all, but let me, let me, let me have this. Let me have this. Let me go for my body goals, man. I appreciate y'all. So the holidays are coming up, right? We got Christmas coming up. We, we just passed Thanksgiving. Christmas is around the corner, man. So it's all about the gifts. It's officially time to kickstart your holiday shopping, but there's no cause for panic. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for mom, dad, teenagers, in-laws, or your best friends, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. Um, Uncommon Goods has some dope, dope stuff. On their website, man. The gifts that they have, man, it's crazy. Let's go into the holi holiday section. You know what I'm saying? Let's go into the for her, for the holidays. For her. You can get jewelry. You can get cold weather gifts, apparel, beauty and wellness, garden, food and drink. They got the best selling joints. Let's look at the best selling joints, man. Let's tap into, let's tap into best sellers for her. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what we got up in here, man. So we'll see. We'll look at uh, you got a murder mystery jigsaw puzzle you can do. You can you can get a geode state ornament. You can get the foul language tea towels. You can get the hand painted holiday flat candle. You can get a storybook do it yourself kit. You can get therapy dough. You can get the 12 days of hot sauce advent calendar. You can get glitter hearts, toilet bombs. They got toilet bombs. They got banana saving hats. You know what I'm saying? They got hats for your bananas. They got college cityscape can shaped glasses, man. They got all kind of stuff, man. Um, and what I like about them, let's see what they got for him. Let's see what they got. Let's do some travel for him. Let's see what we got up in here. They got travel gear for him. You can get, uh, all right, travel gifts, man. Stop asking me to go into the, so you can get some outdoor living gifts. All right, man, I don't know where they're taking me. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wait, hold on. Let me go back to the travel gifts. Boom. Travel gifts for him. 
So you can get a little photographer kids digital camera for the kids. You can get a Smokey the Groovy Bear sweatshirt. You can get a Skylift candle. You can get the Inkless Instant Photo and Label Printer. You can get a National Park Sculpture Necklace. A de-stress kid, uh, a de-stress gift set. You got all kind of stuff, man. Uncommon Goods, man. What I like about them, though, is that their gifts really stand out. When you shop with Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small and independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out for the holiday season. Look for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. From art and jewelry to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you can find just anywhere. Uncommon experiences are more than vo virtual classes. They're unexpected opportunities to have fun and connect in new ways from tarot card readings romantic map making cooking and mixology classes and more and with every purchase you make at uncommon goods they give back a dollar to the nonprofit partner of your choice they've donated more than two and a half million dollars to date so to get 15 percent off your next gift go to uncommongoods.com slash verbal that's uncommongoods.com slash verbal for 15 percent off don't miss out on this limited time offer uncommon goods we are we are all out of the ordinary. Yeah, man. Get in on them uncommon good shouting. Get in on that. You're going to be looking like a star, man, when it comes to the secret Santa and all that. All that good stuff. Ernest Lee asks, what are your top five best food items you've ever had? Wow. You know how tough that is to answer? Top five best food items I've ever had. So, you want to ask the hard-hitting questions? Well, here we go. So, I'm going to break it down in just the type of food more so than the specific, uh, you know, experience. So, Breakfast food is going to be, it's going to take one one slot, breakfast food. That's that's pancakes, that's French toast, that's waffles together. I'm putting them all in one slot. To me, that's some of the best food to me. Pancakes, waffles, and French toast. I love it when I see it. I'm immediately attracted every time when I see pancakes. Now, some some pancakes, I look at them and be like, Ugh, these pancakes ain't got no integrity. These pancakes ain't doing it. That waffle's dry. You know, that French toast is too, you know what I'm saying? But those three things right there, I love them so much. Some crispy edge pancakes, crispy edge French toast, a perfectly made and assembled waffle with the butter that goes in the little squares and just the, the right amount of syrup. Oh, God. <laughs> And I, I don't like my I don't like my waffle too too deep in the Belgium territory where like the the hole is too deep and the ridges are too refined. I kind of like a medium ground when it comes to waffles. Like I, I don't I don't want too much Belgium on that. You know what I'm talking about? And those those three that holy trinity right there. Oh yes. I got to throw tacos in the mix with corn tortillas. Tacos are, they make me feel good about life. Life is good. When I'm eating some good tacos, man, life is just right. It's right. I love some good tacos, man. That's when life is just hitting on all cylinders. In that moment where I'm just like, oh, man, so good. I'm a happy camper. Y'all ever just look in my eyes when I'm eating? Look me in my eyes when I'm eating something good, and you'll see magic, joy, happiness, content, love. You'll see it all in that. Oh, some good tacos, man. So we got, so we got the breakfast. We got the tacos. Third. Let me go in here with some, uh, hmm, third. 
I gotta throw pizza in there, man. I gotta, I gotta throw pizza in there. Pizza is one of the all-time greats of life. Like a good ass pizza, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Some good ass pizza, though. The smell of it, the look of it, just the just the pure existence of just some good ass pizza, man. You get you a good ass slice and you pull it up and then the cheese is hanging and it's like the cheese is hanging on to the slice but still staying in the pan with the rest of the pizza. And it's just like that's visual. And I've had some phenomenal pizza in my life. I've had some. I've had some phenomenal pizza, man. Where you just want to get the you just want to get the pizza pregnant right there on the spot. You want to smash that pizza raw. Mm. Especially when you get a good pizza with a crust that's firing on all cylinders as well. That's when you work. That's when you're cooking with grease. Oh. Oh yes. The pizza. Number four. Number four. Um, I got to go with the breads. I got to go with the breads, y'all. Biscuits, croissants, rolls, banana bread. I got to go with the breads, man. When I when you when when the bread is hidden. Whether it be a biscuit, whether it be a roll, whether it be just some good at bread be hidden on all cylinders when it's done right. Bread is such a good time, man. Oh my God. Oh my God. A good ass biscuit? Man, come on, man. Come on. A good ass biscuit, man. Bread is just so hard to resist. I'll be looking at that good bread. I'll be like, man, some good looking bread in here. And now, now lately, I ain't been, I ain't really been going in on the bread of late. But man, I'll be thinking about it. Oh yes. I'll be thinking about it. Number five. Honorable mention to potatoes, rice. Honorable mention to those cats. Honorable mention. My like rice and just pasta. Oh, pasta just be. Pasta is epic, man. The potatoes, when they just done correctly, it's just a good ass time. A good sandwich. Shout out. Honorable mention sandwiches, lasagna, spaghetti, fettuccine Alfredo, all of these good things. But number five. And shout out to banana cream pie, banana pudding, the desserts, the donuts, all that good stuff. But number five, I have to give it to by a slim margin, because all those honorable mentions coming in hot. I have to give it to cereal. Cereal is just magical for me. And it's, a, it's such a variety of it. Cereal for me is number five. Cereal is just, it makes me feel good. When I'm eating a bowl of cereal, man, I just feel better about everything. I feel like everything's going to be okay. I feel like I'm happy, I'm satisfied. This is really hitting the spot right here. Like I, like I say on stage, cereal is the true soul food, and I believe that 100%. Cereal doesn't get you super full. You only eat some cereal. You're not even that hungry. You just want a little something. The cereal's right there for you. Or you are hungry. You know what? Let me get some cereal. You know what I'm saying? I had a great day. Let me top it off with cereal. I had a bad day. Let me get some cereal to make me feel better. Cereal is the true soul food. And there's such a variety of it. You can just go in. Cereal is a great time. Oh, and I'll be over there. I'll be wanting to do a whole box in one day, but you know what I'm saying? See, that's my top five. That's my top five. Food, food items, food pieces, if you will. Oh, yes. Good old cereal. 
I want to say this, man. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, okay? Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with earning. Earning is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $1,000 per day. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Up to $100 per day. I'm sorry. Up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the earning app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. This would have been brilliance when I was working at Inmersion and Dairy Queen. This would have been right up my alley because the bills was coming in hot and so was the car repair. I needed it. I needed the money, Frankie. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security, and it gives me a lot of peace of mind. Peace of mind is priceless, y'all. Peace of mind is priceless. So download Earning Today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earning app, type in Verbal Cardio under Podcast. When you sign up, it'll help the show. Verbal Cardio under Podcast. Subject to your available earnings, daily max, and pay period max, see earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company. They are not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. So get in on that, man. Earn a little something for yourself in the meantime. Earn a little something for yourself in the meantime. Let's see what else y'all talking about up in here. Tyrese's ex is asking for 20K in child support. Damn. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, man. 20, 20K. 20K a month, I assume. 20K a month, man. We looking at 240,000 a year. I don't know how much Tyrese is worth, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's needed. I don't know if that's too much or too little. I I, I just don't know at this point. Because I don't, I, don't I don't be knowing everybody's pockets like that. You know, I'm always curious to, to, to know how they come up with the number. And if they apply it really to the children, like if they really truly apply it to the children. That's always my thing. Like, are you really, you really using the majority of this money for the kids, right? All right. I don't want no shit. I don't want to see you out here vacationing by yourself. And you you out here on the 20K a month. You using the 20K a month to do your little solo vacations while the kids is out here with the nanny or me. And I feel like, I feel like if we got joint custody of the kids. You know, you should have a low, a lower child support payment. If we if we both put in equal time. Because I, I don't know, I don't every situation is different and I don't I don't know about this particular situation. But I feel like if the father is trying to also have custody of the kids, y'all both want to have custody of the kids. So you'd be like, all right, well, you know, my wife can have the majority of the custody of the kids, but I still want quality time with the kids multiple days a week. I feel like that should lower your child support payment if the kids are with you a large part of the time because it's like, all right, I'm already paying on stuff when the kids are with me. So why do I have to do this extra 20K a month or whatever, but the kid is with me three out of the seven days a week. And, you know, when they're with me, I'm still I'm still paying for stuff for my child. So it's like I'm paying for the roof over their head when they do come with me. And I'm paying for, you know, stuff, meals, clothing, uh, you know, extracurriculars here as well. So it's like, you know, that I hope that factors in when people are going for child support. That I hope that factors in when the kids are spending a lot of time with the with the dad. They're not out here with the eighty thousand a month. 
just off the rip. You know what I mean? So, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. I kind of been I kind of been shying away out of you know too many people's business because it's an overload of people's business all over social media. It's an overload of people's business. All that Diddy and Cassie stuff, all all this Tyree stuff. It's just like man, we are getting overloaded with people's business. So it comes a point where you just be like, I don't really want to dabble in your business. That's the thing, man. It's like, how much dabbling are we doing out here? We're going to keep dabbling because it's going to be dabble after dabble. It's always going to be somebody's business we can be in. But how often do you want to be in people's business? Do you want to mind your own business and just handle your own business and stay in your own business practices? That's a good ass time. When you just mind your own business. Oh. That minding your own business life? That's a good ass time where you just be like, oh, I don't know. I wasn't even paying attention. Woo. That wasn't even paying attention. And I get it. I got a podcast. I got to talk about the topics. But minding your own business is addiction. You can get addicted to minding your own business. And you know what? It's a good time. It's a good life. It's a life that I can get behind. Lupe Fiasco rapping over Andre's flutes. He said he was going to do it. He did it. I'm not sure how many tracks he's going to do, but he did it. I was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And the Andre 3000 album debuted with like 24K. We love this man. We love Andre 3000, man. We just want him back in our lives. That's what we want. Whatever he's doing, we're going to support it because I feel like Andre 3000 is a is a natural treasure in the hip hop community. Andre is he's just one of those artists that that most people love and respect. He's just one of those. He's special. You know what I'm saying? And so we love him so much that we just like, man, whatever whatever you doing, we want in on it. Because Andre has given us so much musically and just just how he is, just the way he is. It's just like, I love this guy. And we trust him. We trust him as an artist. We trust him. When when Outkast first came out and he was just dropping bars, we was like, yeah, man, I like this. And then he was evolving each album. And we were just like, yo, we was, we was going with him with the changes and just like, yo, while he was changing, we was just like, yo, I like this change, man. He, he he did it again. When he was dressing crazy, you know, he didn't let up on the talent, on the bars, on the and then when he completely switched it up with the love below, we was just like, I didn't expect all this, but guess what? This is fire as well. So it's just like we've built up a trust to, to know he's gonna kill it on the feature. If he goes outside of just the standard Beats rhymes in life, and he comes in with the singing. We we know he gonna deliver on that tip. We know he gonna deliver on the bars. So it's just like, yo, we just rock with Andre, and it's a flute album. It's a vibe. It's like you know, you put it on to do your house chores or meditate or go to sleep. And we all need that kind of music. We all need that music to where we can decompress. We need music to where we're not listening to other people's thoughts and lyrics. We're listening to pure music and sounds. And like, sometimes we need that. Sometimes you got to turn off the noise of people just like talking and like, you know, talking about their money and their problems and their violence and their, you know, booty holes and all of that. Sometimes you just need to hear music. You know, I feel like I get mo most creative when I'm listening to instrumental music because I'm not I'm not distracted by the thoughts of others. That's why some people, when they do homework or like projects or whatever, they just listen to music that, that has no lyrics. That way you're not getting distracted. You're not, you know, other people's thoughts and words are not infiltrating your space. So it's like, all right, I'm just taking in the music. I'm vibed up and I'm with my own words and my own thoughts. And that that helps the creative process. And that's, you know, that's what I'm going to start doing too, listening to more inst instrumental music to get my creative juices flowing again because there's no there's no lyrics coming in as a distraction. So it's like, 
this is a cool this is a cool little album you know what i mean put that on it brings your stress level down you know it uh it's dope and so i respect them for it and we love them man we just love them you know what i'm talking about you feel me tanisha turner is asking me this if i can only have one tom hanks movie the rest will be deleted what is your one movie god damn tanisha you going for the jugular. I can only pick one Tom Hanks movie, huh? <laughs> huh. You ain't shit. You ain't shit for this question. Let me break down Tom Hanks. Let me let me off the top, y'all, real quick. Tom Hanks, we got Splash, we got Money Pit, we got Bonfire of the Vanities. We got Turner and Hooch. We got Big. We got Dragnet. We got Philadelphia. We got Forrest Gump. We got Road to Perdition. We got Castaway. We got The Terminal. We got that new joint he just did. My name is Otto. We got Catch Me If You Can. We got A League of Their Own. We got Captain Phillips. We got... uh, we got that movie, the 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 paper or the post or whatever. We got uh, Bridge of Spies. We got Polar Express. He did the voiceover on that. We got Toy Story. We got all the Toy Story movies. He did the voices on there. Uh, all right. We got The Burbs. The Burbs is one of my favorite Tom Hanks movies. Dang, man. One Tom Hanks movie, huh? Damn. Whew. I love Road to Perdition. I love Forrest Gump. I love Big. I love The Burbs. Huh. Bachelor Party. That's another one. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, my God. You know what? Saving Private Ryan. That's what I'm going with. Saving Private Ryan is my selection. That movie right there, I can watch that at any 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 point in time. Saving Private Ryan. That's the one. That's the one for me. For me personally. For me personally. Saving Private Ryan. Hard hitting ass question, man. How dare you, Tanisha Turner? How dare you? Uh, Reese Sunflower asks Top five artists from the 2000s or newer. Oh, you narrowing it down. Top five artists from the 2000s or newer. Just artists in general, not just hip hop, just artists in general. Top five. 2000s and newer. So y'all, y'all, y'all asked me this to take my 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 tried and trues off the table. So it's gonna be no Wu Tang, it's gonna be no Outkast, it's gonna be no Nas, it's gonna be no Sade, Anita Baker, Luther Vandross, Marvin Gaye. I see what y'all are doing. 2000s and up, huh? Top five. 2000s or later. Okay. All right. J Cole. Kendrick Lamar. Two thousands or later. Damn. J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Um. Ooh. Um, dang, so many, wow. Dang, Anderson Pack. Uh, he's not an official pick yet. Hold on. J. Cole, Kendrick. This is tough. Who asked this? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible for this? Would you, uh, I feel like you would throw, would you throw Lupe in there? 
He did come out in the 2000s. He had two classic albums. Five ain't enough, ain't enough space. <laughs> Wait, Kanye came out Kanye, in the 2000s. Kanye, he started his rap career in the 2000s. God. He was producing in the 90s, but he started rapping in 2000s. Oh. I got I got I gotta put Kanye in there. I gotta put Kanye in there. College dropout, late registration, graduation, my dark twisted fantasy. I gotta put Kanye in there. I have to. I have to put him in there. <sighs> I'm making it all rap though. Lupe got two classics. Rhapsody, man. Lupe, Rhapsody, Big Crit. These are... Mm. Tough. Also like Scissor and Janae Aiku. Scissor to me got three classics. Even though, even though uh control and SOS fire. But the one, the one before control, Z, it was like an EP. That EP is a straight playthrough. So technically she got three. Now, Tim's, Tim's, I just got the EP on her. That's that's too soon. I'm going to throw SZA in this five. Because when I think about what she's doing and all the features that she's done, I got to throw her in there. So we got, so we got, so we got Cole, Kendrick, Kanye, SZA, and then... <sighs> now I don't listen to Rihanna like that. I would say, damn, Rihanna does count though. She does count. She does count. I don't listen to Rihanna like that. Beyonce is 90s. She came out in 97, 98, 97, 98, one of them. Uh, I'm, I might have to throw Lupe in that fifth slot. I want to throw Big Crit in there too. Oh, little brother, though. Oh, son of a bitch! Y'all talking too much in the chat, <laughs> man. Who who asked this? I love little brother, man. I little brother might get the fifth slot. So, J. Cole, Kendrick, Kanye, Scissor, Little Brother. I, I, I'm I'm sitting in that because I gotta have a singer in there, man. It's too hip hop heavy. I I have to have a singer in there. And as far as singers go, since the 2000s began, Scissor, Janae, her. Ari Lennox, those those have been they've been they've been consistent. They be pulling up, and so then it, then it boils down to the songwriting, and I'll just be like, "All right, cast be writing," and I, I like good writers when it comes to when it comes to the. Uh, when it comes to the the singing and stuff like that, and I feel like when you when you when you look at my favorite singers of all time, you'll notice that the songwriting is there. Marvin Gaye, Erica Badu, Jill Scott, Amel Larue, um, Astero, um, 
I just I just really like strong songwriting where the lyrics are like, yo, this this feels very personal and like unique. And so that's why I gravitate towards Janae and SZA and even Ari Lennox because I be I feel like I feel like y'all really wrote this. Y'all really sat here and, and, and wrote this up for real, for real. And so, yeah, I'll be liking that. So, yeah, that was a tough-ass question. Man, I'm getting the hell out of here on that note. Screw y'all. Screw everybody. Um, wait, is Jill Scott? Her album came out in 2000. Her album came out in 2000. That means I heard of her in 99. Oh. She got she got writing credits on uh, You Got Me. And that was 99. Yeah. Early 99. And she was on the original version of that You Got Me. So technically Jill Scott hit the scene in 99, but her debut album was 2000. Mm. She's 90s. All right. Barely. Anyway. I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Screw you guys for these questions. I appreciate the patron saints, man. Thank y'all for pulling up, making my podcast better. I appreciate y'all. Um, we're doing a hiatus for daddy issues for the holidays. Uh, so we'll be back in January. So this week, this week will be the last daddy issues for a while. I plan on doing a couple more verbal cardios in the meantime. So keep that in mind. Um, I appreciate y'all. Don't forget to share, spread the word about verbal cardio. Those of you that uh, always tune in, thank y'all, man. Shout out to my patron saints. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for the questions. Um, don't forget to drink more water. And thank you for tuning in to another session of that verbal cardio.